In question 15, we're given the function g of x which is equal to x to the power 9 minus 7x to the power 6 minus 8x cubed. Now that might be quite a terrifying starting point. Powers of 9 is not something you'll have looked at factorising in the past. However, we're given a lead into the question. We're told that we need to factorise it into the form x cubed brackets x cubed plus a x cubed plus b. So we're at least given some guidance into how we would factorise this. Since we're going to have an x cubed out front, let's extract that as a common factor. I often mention common factors as the starting point in many factorizations, or at least something you should check for, because if it's available, it would help. x to the power 9 divided by x to the power 3 will leave x to the power 6. The coefficient's unaffected, because there's no coefficient here, or rather there's 1, and minus 7 divided by 1 is still minus 7 x to the 6 divided by x to the 3, 6 minus 3 leaves 3. And here the minus 8 remains. x cubed divided by x cubed just leaves us with the minus 8. We've partially factorised this into the style that we were guided to. Referring to that again, I know that we're going to end up this way here. I need to work out what a and b are. Well, if I was expanding these brackets, x to the power 3 times x to the power 3 would give me the x to the 6. These two numbers here must multiply to give me minus 8, but add up to give me minus 7. Minus 8 times positive 1 gives me minus 8, and minus 8 plus 1 gives me minus 7. If you expand that, and you might want to pause and take a moment to have a go at that, you'll be able to see where that came from. So we've now factorised that into the required form. I would state that a equals minus 8, and that b equals 1. In part b, the question says, hence find the three roots of g of x. x cubed is one of the factors. Therefore, if x cubed equals 0, then we can solve for x. We know the factors equal 0 when we're finding the roots. Well, the cube root of 0 is 0, so we have x is 0. Our next factor is x cubed minus 8. And since we're getting roots, we know the factor will equal 0. Rearranging, x cubed equals 8, and the cube root of 8 is 2. We have, now have another, another root. Our final factor, we will also set equal to 0. Rearranging, and then cube rooting. The cube root of minus 1 is minus 1, because minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1 gives us minus 1. People are used to squares, and when you can't square root a negative, but you can cube root a negative, you can always try that on your calculator as well. The cube root of negative 1, and you'll find that it does give you 1. So here are our three roots, and that's question 15 completed.